Hi guys, uh, so this video uh, is a little bit different than what I had planned. I had planned in mid-December to do a video all about my OCD, and then the next video was going to be tips on dealing with uh, living with chronic problems, chronic medical problems, and dealing with doctors all the time. I was going to get some tips on that. Uh, so that obviously didn't happen. There's no OCD video, as you can tell. Uh, so what ended up happening, um, or sorry, what's going to happen, later in this month, I will do the OCD video. The next three weeks are very busy. And then I will follow it with the other video I was talking to. This video is going to be about some, sorry, I'm adjusting, uh, some revelations I've had recently, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Um, I'll just jump in. So, sorry, I have a tongue, mouth sore. In October, I had, for about three weeks, what I thought was, you know, a major depressive episode. I'm diagnosed, just for a refresher, my mood disorder is major depression, which is also known as clinical depression. And my anxiety disorders are generalized anxiety disorder and OCD, just for a refresher, because that's basically what this video is about. And so I had this major depressive episode, which was a little odd because I was on antidepressants, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and when that was happening, though, I had a revelation. Sorry, I haven't been looking at notes a lot. I had a revelation, like, I might be too strong a word, I don't know. I had the idea uh, that I should work with animals, because I've been volunteering at a pet store in the cat adoption area, which I've talked about, and it's mostly me in a room full of cats for three hours. I mean, I do, people come in to look to adopt, I talk to people, but it's not a, a position where I'm constantly dealing with other people, and I'm realizing that's the kind of job I need, where I can sort of work at my own pace. If I'm stressed out, I can sit down for a minute. The cats can't talk. They don't care if I take a break for a minute. So I need that kind of job. And I was thinking, you know, the, the, the episode lifted. I was feeling better. And one of the, I volunteer at two different stores, actually. And one of the stores was hiring. And I, my plan initially uh, was to go ahead and apply sort of early this year. Uh, but more stuff happened that's changed things. I thought I was ready, like I've talked about my goals for getting back to work, one of them being emotional control. I thought I was doing quite well in that regard, other than the, the depressive episode sort of kind of made me question that. Um, but now things have changed and I have different plans because I had another episode of some sort uh, in December. And... I went downhill pretty fast, and within like less than a week, I went from a little depressed to visiting an emergency department situation. Uh, but when the episode started, I had another sort of realization. I was realizing that I need to treat my OCD uh, before I can really look for work, because it's pretty much ruined uh, childcare for me. I'm going to explain it in a different video. Uh, but I find it, I, this is someone who studied childcare and child development, and I find it difficult now to be around children. Like an example is I overanalyze everything they do, because my diagnosis was missed. So, and I suffered for that. And I always think, what if something's missing for this child? And I'll go in, into in a lot more depth in another video. But yeah, my OCD is basically ruined working with children, so it occurred to me, you know what? I should deal with that, um, sorry about my mouth, I realized I should deal with that uh, before I try to go back to work, because it'll find a way to ruin cats or animals, and I think it maybe already has started a little bit. So that was another realization I had. So now my plan is to get, you know, OCD help, and then look for work. Um, and then what ended up happening, like I told you, I went downhill pretty quickly. I ended up going downtown to, I live in a suburb of Toronto, and I went downtown to CAMH, the Center for Addiction and Mental Health. Uh, I basically spent three days going back and forth there. It's long, convoluted. I don't feel that it's necessary for me to get into details of what happened there. Some of it's kind of embarrassing. Uh, they did jack up 
one of my antidepressants. And um, they also told me to stop using cannabis, uh, which is legal in Canada now, uh, because they felt I was having a bad reaction to THC. So that was useful information. And since I stopped using it, and since they increased that dose, I have, you know, been climbing out of the hole. Um, but another thing that happened while I was there is they gave me a referral to the Mood and Anxiety Disorders Clinic. And I actually was going to go to my family doctor and ask for a referral. Uh, that The day I realized I needed OCD help, I looked around for some government-covered programs in Toronto. And I found a couple, and I was going to go to my family doctor and ask for a referral. And now I don't have to do that, because they gave me the referral. Um, and I'm quite optimistic, actually. I don't know much yet about what's going to go on, what they do in this clinic. I'm assuming there's going to be therapy involved. I've done mindfulness, and I've done cognitive behavioral therapy. But there's lots of other therapies. Um, for mood and anxiety as well, that I can think I can think of off the top, top of my head. Exposure and response prevention, acceptance and commitment therapy, dialectical behavior therapy. Um, so I'm curious. I'm curious to see what they're going to offer me. I'm not, I wouldn't say excited because I think it's going to be hard work, but I think it'll be worth it. I think it'll change things. I'm determined um, my mood and anxiety aren't going to control me anymore. And everything else I've ever set my mind to, I've gotten there in the end. I've even finally started losing weight. So I will do this too. And the reason I'm so confident is because I'm very, very self-aware. I find more than other people. Like I have some, I have some notes here. My brain has been very chaotic, so my notes are also chaotic. But I'm noticing patterns or things that anxiety does to me. I'm already quite self-aware, and for me, in general, if I have a reason behind the behavior, or sometimes even if I've realized I'm doing the behavior, that's the first step for me to change the behavior. Uh, so when it comes to my anxiety, it's almost like it's a, a waxing and waning cycle, would be the best way to describe it. Sometimes I'm more anxious than other times, but on the whole, it probably has gotten worse over the years. Um, I'm not entirely sure the reasons for that, but I'll figure it out. I always do figure things out. And what I've noticed, the reason I also kind of refer to it as a cycle, is because when my anxiety is high, I mean, occasionally I'm just a ball of anxiety and I couldn't tell you why. Most of the time, though, if you ask me to state why, I it would all tie into a handful of big worries that I have. So I may say that I'm worried about my friend, but it'll actually trace back to the environment or money. Money is a big one for me. Poverty, income inequality, the affordable housing crisis in Toronto, big source of anxiety for me. And my brain's very good at connecting other things back to that. And that hasn't changed in years. The same handful of things I worry about have um, been the same for a number of years. Which, because I'm so aware of what they are, I'm optim I'm more optimistic about getting help. Um, and what are some other things that anxiety sort of does to me that I've noticed? Let's see. Um, well, I definitely project onto other people. There's definitely an Asperger's element to that. Because I do have a very hard time understanding if a thing makes me happy, why doesn't it make you happy? Or vice versa. And then I think... They must be unhappy, so I get anxious and worried about them. And like 90% of the time, when I worry about my best friend, it's actually me projecting. Um, another bit anxiety-related behavior, and all of these revelations have just been in the past few weeks. Um, another one is I call I call it like fill in the blanks. Like some people like shut down, don't like to talk when they're upset, or maybe there's, maybe there's even just a lull in the conversation. For me, it's like you just change languages in the middle of a conversation and now I can't follow. And when I'm in when I'm in this anxious state, this is what anxiety is doing to me. My brain starts filling it in with all kinds of horrible, oh my god, the person doesn't like me, this, that, and the other. 
Um, that that can that causes I think it irritates other people if anything, because now I'm in a panic about something that's not actually happening, and uh, other things other people have noticed as well. I cannot handle uncertainty anymore. I'm not. I'm very rigid and inflexible. And my mom was commenting the other day how much worse it's gotten. I never used to be like that. So that, to me, I couldn't tell you why. Like, it's a little confusing. Because sometimes I can tell you why I'm anxious. And sometimes I'm a ball of anxiety and that's affecting other things. It kind of goes both ways. And I couldn't really tell you why I've gotten more like that. Um... But I can tell you, the last couple of things I've noticed about my anxiety is, I think it masks, I, I'm calling it, I'm using the word mask. It's like my go-to emotion. Somebody the other day was talking about uh, going to Niagara Falls for New Year's, and my initial reaction was butterflies in my stomach. But then when I thought about it, I'm like, I'm not anxious, I'm jealous. I, you know? And... That's actually, it leads into mood a little bit. It is the Mood and Anxiety Disorders Clinic. Um, everything's a tangled web. You can't, I'm not surprised they have it together like that. That's probably how it needs to be treated. Uh, but yeah, speaking of mood and saying how I was jealous actually and not anxious. I've noticed other emotions. Um, anger, jealousy, frustration. I would say are the big ones that I think are being jammed down inside me. Sorry, I keep looking at my notes. I'm not organized. <sighs> yeah, so uh, all these emotions, for whatever reason, some I could tell you why, some not, are kind of just jammed down inside me, and I haven't really been dealing with them properly. Next time I see my counselor, I'm, I do want to explore some of that stuff more. Like, we've, I've made progress with her talking about Issues with my dad, for example. So I, I trust her. I feel like I could probably get to the bottom of some of these emotions with her. And I think that would help a lot uh, with the depression side of things. And let me just tell you, the depression got so bad. There was, a few weeks ago, at one point, suicidal ideation. I don't feel the need to expand on that. But I want people to know that. Because a lot of people deal with it. And it's not talked about enough. Um. And in terms of treating depression, I heard a really good analogy not too long ago. That antidepressants are like scaffolding on a building that's falling down. Perfectly good tool, but you should really fix the building eventually, because when the scaffolding is gone, it'll crumble anyway. So what I'm realizing, I don't know how long, I maybe I'll always be on antidepressants, I don't know that. But I'm, I'm discovering some of the reasons that the building, quote unquote, is crumbling. And which is some of those emotions uh, that I shoved down. And probably all that anxiety doesn't have a great effect on me either. That probably brings me down in some way. Um. Hmm. And I've noticed recently, this is, uh, my brain's kind of chaotic right now. That's why the video is a little chaotic. I've noticed that I'm, like, avoiding reality almost more and more. Like, I come up with scenarios in my head of how I think things should look, even if they're unrealistic. And then I'll even complain. I'll be like, if we had a pool, this is this. And my mom will be like, why, that, what, we don't have a pool. What's the point of going there? And I realize I need to deal with reality more. I'm, I have to accept that I may not love every aspect of my life. I need to deal with reality more. Um, and the last sort of area where I've had some realizations recently is just about how low my self-esteem really is. And all of these things came from several weeks of my brain in constant ruminating motion. And seeing how low my self-esteem really is, like, I've talked about it a little bit with my counselor, like the fact that I can't disagree with people. Because I take it as a personal attack. Maybe I'm wrong. If they're not agreeing with me, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, big reflection on my self-esteem. But another thing I've noticed... Well, two things I've noticed recently. Um, I, I actually carry guilt. 
I actually sometimes find myself feeling like I don't deserve certain things. If other people go without, why should I have X, Y, Z? Um, and the big, big thing I've noticed is that my diagnoses and my past trauma are kind of, I've tied it into my identity. I was, that's how I was differentiated from the other kids in school. I was the weird one. I was the one that was acting out. If I take away those things, what makes me unique? I'm having, you know, to force myself to think about who I actually am. And I think being able to say, I'm Emily, and list a bunch of things without bringing up diagnoses or bringing up past trauma, the past trauma being domestic violence, by the way, uh, I think that will help me immensely. And I'm glad I've realized this. I'm glad I realized how much I've tied this stuff into my identity. Like an example would be on Father's Day, when everyone else on Facebook is posting pictures and telling cute stories about their fathers, there's a part of me that likes the fact that I'm unique. I'm not posting cute pictures of my father and telling stories and blah, blah, blah. Um, wow, that was quite the <laughs> sort of rambling heavy video there, wasn't it? Um. So I think I'm going to wrap up this well-organized mess of a video. God, that sentence didn't even make sense. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now. Those are some of the realizations I've had. So my plan now is to, you know, I got a referral. I have to wait for my first assessment at the Mood and Anxiety Disorder Clinic. We'll find out how that works. So my plan is to deal with, you know, my OCD and all that. My emotional control is not where I thought it was. I'm still having issues. So I'm going to work on that. And then I'm going to look for a job uh, working with animals. So hopefully by the middle of this year, I'm firmly back in the workforce, if not earlier. I think that's a, I think that's an okay goal, though. And like I said, I've had all these different realizations, which I think can only benefit me. Which may, And I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic about... Uh, my fu my future dealing with wound anxiety issues. Um, so yeah, I'm going to wrap that up. And I'll be back in probably late January. With a video about my OCD that never happened. So uh, I apologize for that being kind of disjointed in every which way. But if you made it to the end, thank you.